Dog hat. Oh. Now, let's see if this dog gets the hint that that dog is uncomfortable. If this dog, oh. When, when a dog jumps on you, my shed method works really well. But you also have to satiate your dogs and get them doing what they enjoy doing, what they naturally do, what their body, not all dogs can nor want to be up like this. Get your dog with another dog, let them get this energy out, let them get their up and their pawing in on another dog, satiate the natural behavior that is these two dogs and their upness and it will reduce on you. If you don't give your dog an outlet to do this thing that they love, then it will happen on you more. Now, if this, if this gets too rough, I'm gonna stop it. If there's any humping, I'm gonna stop it. But this is about satiation, okay? So getting, getting your dog, if your dog, <coughs> chewing, satiation. Young dogs, these are both young dogs. Young dogs need to chew. You, you can, they're gonna chew on your hands, they're gonna chew on your baseboards, they're gonna chew on your shoes. Hey! All right, mark and punish. Went for a hump, I said hey, this dog immediately stopped and immediately looked at me and had a, a little bit of I'm sorry. Then it went for a jump, and, or a hump, and then it, it just, it stopped immediately. So. Mark and punish, I said, hey, you've seen me do mark and punish before, what I call mark and punish, and the dog is like, barely listens, you have to grab, you have to have a consequence. There was no consequence there. Yelling hey is not a consequence. It's a marker for incorrect behavior, and it is a shocker, okay? It basically shocks them out of it a little bit. Now, if this dog does it again, goes for the hump again, we can't punish that. We, are, we have to be specific. The criteria has to be very clear. That was not a hump, that was close to a hump. But we can't punish every behavior or these dogs literally couldn't ever do anything. I think being a professional dog trainer is the greatest job in the world. I left SeaWorld, one of the greatest jobs in the world to become a professional dog trainer. You can do the same with a Beckman coaching program. I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description. I also know that having an aggressive dog is one of the most difficult things in the world and it affects your life and all aspects of your life. I now have the Beckman Aggression P Program. I'll put the link in the description as well. We're punishing too rough. Well, we're punishing everything. We're punishing half humps. Okay, we're punishing everything. Now, we are gonna punish full humps. Get them the whole time. Okay. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, so back to mark and punish. The hay was a shocker. The hay was a marker. The hay was not a con consequence. The hay was not punishment, okay? So if the dog did not get off, nor if the dog did not say he's sorry, that's a half hump, that's not a full hump. The other thing you can punish is if the brown dog, or this dog, starts to feel they are saying, hey, I don't like this anymore, then we need to mark and punish this dog for whatever behavior made the other, other dog uncomfortable. And the brown dog, the dark brown dog, is starting to get a little bit, just a tiny bit uncomfortable. And so we are gonna correct this dog so that this dog starts to learn you can't do that behavior you were doing because it makes other dogs uncomfortable. Now, it might, like if this dog met Prince, it might not make Prince uncomfortable to do that same behavior. So the dog, had, oh. Now, let's see if this dog gets the hint that that dog is uncomfortable. If this dog, oh. You're gonna get it, dude. Always let the other, the corrections from the other dog are better than your corrections. Generally speaking. Okay, Prince's corrections are obviously knock it off right now. That dog's correction was a little bit of get away from me to the light brown dog. But if the light brown dog doesn't take it, and a lot of dogs are kind of like, oh, that was fun, you got mad at me, then we need to follow up and we need to back up the dark brown dog when he goes at this dog 
This dog backs up. We need to, in addition, grab this dog, sit him down, punish the behavior because, and back up this dog and Now, we're gonna give leeway both ways because of the obvious sort of joy and happiness they have for each other. So I'm not gonna go hard on this dog. If this dog gets mad at this dog, I'm not gonna go hard on this dog because, because this, is, this is pretty equal, really. Neither of them are doing anything really wrong. My, but, but I started this video with, oh, I missed a hump. I'm talking too much. Look at this. Now, if, now, there's a time and a place where you cannot pick a specific behavior, but where the energy just gets too high. Hey! Sit. Sit. Okay. Okay. Calmed them, marked the nuttiness, hay was just for them to stop, a shocker. Then grabbed this one immediately, light brown one, immediately said, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm sitting. This one didn't sit and continued to look at the other one. I'm not a big pusher, I don't love pushing the butt down, but just a little touch to the butt. This one then sat, but I don't think the brown one was still, the brown one was still just looking at the tan one. So then I made this one sit. I made this one kind of look at me. Then you notice the calm release. I didn't go, okay, go nuts again. I went, okay, calm release. This is not a crazy release that you, at the dog park where you're like, go nuts. This is, that was a calm release so that they don't go back to it. So there was a mark and punish in there, or at least mark. Then there was, for a specific behavior, then there was, stop and kind of correct and calm the nuttiness, no specific behavior in there. The energy just got too much. And if these dogs were worse, then they, the, that's when fights start, not between these two, but um, fights start that when energy just gets high. So then there was just a calming thing in there. And now they're back to this. This is not rocket science. Really the point of this whole video at the beginning was the upness of these dogs and the satiation part of it. They're both crazy jumpers on people. And think about satiation. You have to give dogs, kids, husbands, wives, you have to give them what they want, like what they're meant for, what they're good at. You have to give that to them or you're just constantly tamping down natural instincts and urges and the way these two dogs' bodies are made and the way their minds are made is an, an, uh, an enjoying of upness. Then you come in the house and you're doing my jumping method, which is, in my opinion, the best method, but you're still just tamping down. I'd rather go, go do that on them, because go do that with other dogs because other dogs don't mind it. Then I'm gonna do my shed method. Now you've really elim eliminated jumping when it's jumping on you because you did two things. You fixed the behavior, you trained the behavior of not jumping, and you gave them an outlet for the behavior that they love to do. You're not just tamping down natural instincts. You're giving them an outlet for natural instincts on organisms that don't mind it. Then you're saying, don't do this with me, but go do it on them. And that is the best way to reduce behaviors. That's why we, that's why exercise is so important in dog training is just getting energy out of their muscles. And then all these other problems start to just go down because you're giving this holistic kind of energy releasing thing. It's the same thing as like, go jump on that dog, go do that thing. You love dog, go run in a field. That's a wonderful thing. And then you see aggression subside. You see, off. Now, I don't think, sit. Oh, here's that problem. Look at the tail. Look at the tail. I don't think that this dog, sit. We are freaking over that, dude.
We are over. So off, I said off and clapped. The dog literally is like, yeah, I'll stay up here a little longer. Then got down. And I really don't care about counter surfing, but this dog's personality is one of like, yeah, I don't really care what you say. Starts here for a board and train. Like, it's about caring what me and the owner say. That's like what dog training is about. So he said, oh, I'll get down. And then I grabbed, see his tail? He's like, yo, what, what, what are you gonna do, dude? So then push the butt down. Then there was, um, he just has this, uh, she just has this kind of entitlement to her that I don't wanna like squash. But at nine months old, You've got to get this dog. Um, you've got to get these dogs like caring about what the owners say. It's not just about cues. It's about human voices matter. Come. When the people say come, it matters. When the people say off, it matters. When the people say sit, it matters. To this dog right now, those things are all just, they're just, it's just a, it's a request. Off is not a request. Come is not a request. Sit is not a request. And it's not a big game when words are coming out of our mouth. We have to slowly, just like raising a, a child, we have to slowly have the child, those words matter. Because at times those words are unbelievably important to dogs and children. Running into the street, that come matters or they die. With children, don't do this behavior matters or they die. So it starts with any words coming out of your mouth mattering. Does that mean that at nine months old, wherever this dog went, at nine months old, oh, laying down, at nine months old, we go super duper duper hardcore. No, that wasn't super duper duper hardcore. Did I put an e-collar on the dog and light it up when it got up there? No, that would be super duper duper hardcore but we got to start the process. So satiation, mark and punish, satiating their natural instincts to, of these two dogs, which was very apparent, naturally what they, what they want to do and what they're good at, mark and punish, humping, all kinds of things in that video.